Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. So today we're over on the pay to win account and we just picked up a couple new cards which I'll show you guys right now. These are surprise coupons. When making a purchase, you have the opportunity to use this coupon to get extra rewards. So essentially, as Lilith has changed the promotional packs that you get, if you have purchased promotional packs in the before previous to this, um, they're actually sending out these surprise coupons, which is a little bit disappointing that they don't just let us use these or redeem these, but essentially it is a surprise to purchase other packs. So we look, we just got this limited offer right here, which is great limited customizable offer, but essentially we'll go with red chess in here. We'll go with some stargazer cards. We'll go with this one. Boom. We have to spend rewards. That is right, guys. Using surprise coupons, you can use up to four in a transaction, meaning that they are going to give me four additional choices out of here, depending on what we want to get. If we want some more gold, some more EXP or some more essence, they're also going to give me four choices out of here, which is going to be a bunch of red chests. If we want to go red chests, we got poke coins in here, amplifying and primordial emblems, as well as essence. But unfortunately, the drawback to having all the surprise coupons is that's right, it is an incentive to purchase more in the game because you do have to spend essentially to earn or, or redeem your surprise coupons. If I stop right now, we don't make any more purchases. We're never gonna use the surprise coupons. So they're actually just gonna sit here and go to waste if we're not continuously putting money into AFK Arena. Second thing we're gonna look at is the Arcane Labyrinth in regards to the Dismal Maze. So the Dismal Maze has had a couple updates Floor one looks relatively the same, as you can see right here. Looking at the relics, definitely going, th this time I'm gonna go with my um, crit rating, of course, coupled with my second one up here, which is the Knight's Fury. I know a lot of players have said that the Dismal Maze is still very, very difficult to come through, but planning out the relics that you have in here will, will help out a ton. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go through floor one, and then we'll take a look at the second floor. All right, guys, so we went ahead and we finished out that first floor. So moving on to the second floor of the Dismal Maze, and this is where they made the maze a little bit earlier. So as you're going through these floors, you're picking up relics here. You're picking up your second set of relics. Here are two new, essentially, um, items that are in the game. Divine Fountain resurrects a fallen ally and regenerates 50% of their energy. Two, the second effect allows all surviving heroes to recover 50% of their maximum health. So this is kind of a very, very supercharged fountain because it is taking the fallen hero that it's going to resurrect and it is also giving you the 50% to maximum health. So it is a supercharged divine fountain, which is very, very cool to see. The second one is the Witch's Den, a gloomy house shrouded in mist, random relics. So select one out of three random relics by trading in one of your own. So they do give you three choices here to trade in one of your relics, which is very cool. So that way, when you're finishing out the second floor and going into the more difficult third floor, you can actually choose which relics you do want to keep, which relics you can swap depending on your choices. So we'll go ahead and make progression through floor two and take a look at the relics we get in here. All right, so we finally made our progression. We got up to our two new stations, the Divine Fountain and the Witch's Den. So these are the choices the Den is going to give us. We have Zealous Crusader, allies, heroes deal 100% more damage to enemies that currently have less than 300 energy points, so not too bad. Dispelling Arrow removes the majority of enemy debuffs, enemy buff effects that are, are the target is stuck to an ally's normal attack, so we remove debuffs. Then increase the duration of the majority of debuffs affecting affecting enemy heroes by 60%. Hmm, so that, that's a really good solid debuff, but we don't have too many debuffs. Dispelling arrow, I'm not really too concerned about. So we're gonna go with this zealous sword. So we're gonna pick our zealous sword in here. Now we have to choose a relic that we're going to get rid of. So I like Overlord because it does a stun. Um, I like our crit combined with the Knight's Fury. And this one, the Divine Chalice, isn't really the best, but right now it is. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that Aegis. So we're going to go ahead and trade this one. And if you guys haven't noticed that this is one of the absolute toughest combinations that we've ever fought in the Dismal Maze, ultimately, 
Enemy heroes receiving 70% less damage. After 20 seconds of the battle, enemy heroes lose 15% of their max health per second, but will not die. So they do take damage, um, but essentially it, it takes a little bit in battle. So you're not going to be able to damage them up front. That is coupled with this one. Allied heroes lose 4% of their maximum health every second. So essentially for the first 20 seconds of the battle, you're not going to be able to damage the enemies. You're doing 70% of the damage while you're losing 4% of the health. That is right, guys. Over 20 seconds is a ton of health, meaning that you need a lot of support classes in here. Sortus works wonders in here, especially with his healing ability. Taylene, um, even looking at Namora or Silas because you're very limited to the heroes you can bring in here. But then, of course, to top it off, after 30 seconds of battle, allied heroes are stunned for five seconds and dealt damage equal to 30% of their health, max health respectively. So essentially, first 20 seconds, you can't kill the enemies while you're losing 4% of the hit points. If you hit this 30 second mark, it's going to stun you and take 30% of your health, which again is absolutely crazy. This has been the most challenges, challenging dismal maze that I have ever done. And that is why I'm really, really hoping that these help so we can go ahead and finish this out. All right, so we made it to the third floor. We haven't used any of our Duras tiers. So we do get another weapon right here, which is a Heart Seeker. So we're actually gonna go that route. Once I pick up this one, I'm gonna actually hop over and pick up the Warden of Salvation. Um, very, very powerful. When the ally's health is below 50%, damage received is reduced by 50%. Definitely one to use in here. And then there we go, guys. We got two more. We have the Divine Fountain again, and we have the Witch's Den. This time, since it is just the last battle, I'm going to pick up the, the Divine Fountain up here. So hopefully we can get through this without too many casualties. All right, so we finally made it through the maze, got to the last Divine Fountain. And before our last battle, I did have to use one of my Dura's Tears. The double battles in here are absolute insanity to try to finish. So we're gonna go back. This is the formation that I actually ran in here. So ultimately, Arthur is going to buff Ainz and is going to buff Silas. We have a battle in here for support. Taylene for healing, Silas for healing, because again, that 4% debuff is absolutely nasty when it comes to the damage these heroes take. This one's gonna to be tough because of Lorzen. Lorzen's shield that he puts on the heroes, as you can see with that nine of nine um, furniture, is very, very hard to get through and hard to get through multiple times. But there we go, guys. We got through pretty easy in there. Get 200 diamonds, get a ton of coins. Look at that, we got gladiator coins. We got some labyrinth tokens in there, as well as, of course, the loot. The, the loot is what we want. Our final chest is going to give us Boom, we got some very nice mythic faction gear, which is what we want to see, and a whole bunch more loot. So guys, that will do it for the Dismal Maze. 180 times it has been completed. So making it a little bit easier on floor in two and three with getting those bonuses, whether it's exchanging relics or if you're going ahead to um, get a hero back, plus some health, plus some energy, really makes a big difference in the difficulty of the Dismal Maze. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I know a lot of people have not been running the Dismal Maze because it is very, very difficult. It is time consuming to get through, but ultimately the rewards you get out of there are very, very good. So again, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.